Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows. You might have missed me last week because I wasn't posting a plugin last week. That's because I was working on something. And it's something that is rather momentous. At least I think it is. It might not be the first person in the world to do it. It's possible that F Paul Frindle, uh, Sony Oxford, was doing something like this. I'm not sure. I haven't asked him specifically. Bob Olson thinks maybe he is. This is called Dither Float. And what it does is it dithers to floating point numbers, such as you have in uh, Core Audio on Macintosh, or indeed the VST floating point bus. Core Audio is a 32-bit floating point bus, and VST uses 32-bit floating point bus, but it can also use a 64. Here's what dither float does. This is what floating point truncation looks like. You've got these very large coarse amounts up here, and then half again, and half again, and so on, and so on, and so on. And the coarseness of it, because this is going to take up about half the size of the audio space, and then this is going to take up another half, and so on. So it's almost to scale. If you're a 32-bit output, like for the output of a floating point uh, number in Core Audio or any plugin, because all plugins using Core Audio um, output to 32-bit floating point, that's how it's built, then the loudest stuff in uh, the output word, like this is from 0 to uh, minus 60B, and from minus 60B to clipping is this is using the full coarseness of what the 32-bit word has to offer. Now, you might think you can't hear truncation because that is, uh, it works out to being about 25-bit linear, 25-bit uh, fixed point or so, but it, it's cumulative. It'll add up. And of course, if you have overs, over 1.0, it immediately goes to literally 24-bit truncation. And if you did 60B over that, it would go to 23-bit truncation and so on. I bet you don't think you can hear that, but I'll show you how. We've got our audio, and say it is operating within this range. This is 1, and this is minus 1. This is clipping. What if you could boost it until you were in this coarse range, and still not blow your ears up because it would be way louder if it was that far beyond clipping. I'll tell you how you offset it with a number. Just add a number to it, convert it to float, convert it to floating point, and then after you've done that, subtract a number again. But why do I explain it to you when I can just show you? Turn on dither float, and as I increase this, I'm adding a number to this, converting it to float, and then at subtracting the number again. As you can hear, it doesn't seem to do anything. You see, these are large numbers too. This is not just adding a four, but. Well up. Now that's not a 17, that's like 17 bits worth of gain added. It's the same calculation as in bit shift game. So I've basically just added a very large number and converted to float and then subtracted the number again. And you can plainly hear that it's truncation, but you can also hear that by turning on a test tone like this. It's going to start in the bass and go up to 200 hertz. I think I'm safe with this test tone that I'm not going to get copyright struck. If I use noise as a test tone, I get this jerk in somewhere in the world uh, copyright striking me because he thinks that he is content ID'd uh, noise at yeah, YouTube. But 
In this case, I can bring it to only 14 bits of added just DC offset number. And you can hear, and even more so, you can plainly hear that it is quantizing. We have boosted it up to the point where the uh, waveform being represented by this floating point number is showing huge obvious stair steps. Now I've known this has happened for a while and I tried to do noise shaping uh, techniques to fix this, but this is what I was working on. This is not the kind of sign you want. Now granted, you got to use a test tone and a very big offset to get this kind of thing. So what do we do about it? Again, I tried using uh, floating point uh, noise shaping, which is keep track of how far off the output is from that sine wave that we want. I tried a couple of versions and then somebody was telling me, oh, you can't dither floating point. It would be meaningless because if you dithered it, dither has to correspond to this. And if you were using a noise level that was as loud as this, it would be completely wiping out the quiet stuff down here. And if you used a different noise level for each of these steps, then it would be different noise volume and that would be uh, bad because it would be fluctuating based on the audio coming in. That's one of the reasons we use TPDF dither instead of flat dither is because flat dither, if you have audio like that, you'll hear a sort of fizz happening on the middle points of that test tone. Like if you ran the, the 20 hertz test tone through it, you'd hear a 20 hertz modulating output happening uh, on flat dither. TPDF dither gives you just a clean noise floor with nothing going on. But, well, again, why am I explaining this to you when I can show you? There you have it. 32-bit floating point dither. It's scaled so that it's always the same volume as the quantization of the mantissa. And that changes in steps, like half of it is this loud, and then this half is this loud, and then another half is this loud. And you can hear that when I change the float offset. You can hear it's getting quieter. This plugin has one further trick to it. If I set it to zero, you are doing 32-bit floating point dither even if you're working at 64-bit. And that could be useful for some people. Like if you're working on Cubase or Reaper and you got a 64-bit floating point bus, it won't work directly with the mixing, the 64-bit mixing bus in Logic, but the idea is if you are saving 64, if you're saving 32-bit floating point files rather than 24-bit ones, and you're working in 64-bit, this will still give you a dither to the 32-bit that you're saving as. But really what it's about is this. Throw in the offset. And of course it gets louder and louder. But no matter what it does, the test tone is undisturbed beneath it, and I'll tell you why. This dither is being scaled up and down relative to what the exponent is doing. The exponent tells you when it changes from this coarseness to uh, finer grain, ha it's half as fine of grain and um, half the amount of space being taken up, and then so on. Here we'll take it down a couple of steps. But across the entire mantissa, the amplitude of the dither is the same, and it's TPDF dither. It's actually TPDF high pass dither, which is why it sounds kind of light and airy to you. Since the waveform, let's set it down so that this, this frequency change is staying at a very low frequency. We could leave it at just 20 hertz, 
you can't hear that. But this is where you would hear the fluctuations of the dither if it was flat dither. Flat dither, you know, along with this uh, low 20 hertz frequency, you'd hear it fluttering very rapidly because as flat dither passes through the areas where it can work, it changes its amplitude based on where it is in the waveform. But this is not changing amplitude where it is on the waveform, this is changing amplitude where it is on the mantissa. If it crosses over between two mantissa levels, there'll be a slight change, but it's not nearly as significant as using flat dither. So in many ways, it's uniform. This is not correlated to the waveform underneath it. You can kind of hear as it's interacting, and I think I can... But the way this works, since it's changing its dither volume according to the exponent rather than the mantissa, it's not interacting with the individual waveforms except when they change exponent values, and that's much rarer. That's, less, that's happening less often than it would if it was simply a flat dither. So it sounds more like TPDF dither, because it is TPDF dither. And just as a little reminder, we've been listening to all this, and we've been listening to this nice featureless noise floor. Let's hear what it sounds like down at this noise floor in 32-bit floating point truncation. And this is what underlies everything in all of the plugins that you've got, most likely. Now granted, floating point is certainly cleaner than, say, exporting everything to fixed point. But do you want this? I don't think you do. And this is a reason to not use too many plugins, because if you're working in core audio or whatever, every time you go out of a plugin, you'll return to this. Every time, it'll be throwing this kind of ugliness onto your sound. And you can hear it quite plainly on music. This is a 32-bit floating point truncation. It's just offset by a huge amount. But we know what to do about that, don't we? Did they engage? Oh, one more thing. By the time you're watching this, every Air Windows plugin will do floating point dither to the bus. That's the core audio bus, and in VSTs, it will dither to 32 bit, and it will also dither to 64 bit. You're much less likely to build up the, tran the truncation artifacts on 64 bit because it'll take a lot, a lot longer. It's just not going to build up that grindy noise nearly as fast. 32-bit, you're going to start picking it up when you pile plugins upon plugins. You might be dithering the output. You might be dithering saving the files. But between plugins, especially on a 32-bit host like Core Audio, which is the Mac, you will be adding stuff. And this is why sometimes when you start using too many plugins, you're stuff is going to start sounding flat and losing quality. It is this. And all the Air Windows plugins have been modified at the time you see this to this. For free. So the individual plugin downloads will have been updated, but a quick way to replace everything that you use is to download the file newupdates.zip 
It's on the uh, website, and I'll also link to it in all my posts and stuff. And then copy whatever format you use over to your components folder. There is going to be a backup for the previous arrangement, which was different kinds of noise shaping things that didn't work as well as I would have liked. But uh, I'm thinking this is going to be one that you're going to want to use. It's a pretty significant upgrade. And for that reason, the code that I'm doing to you to do this is just a little extra license and making it public domain. It's also part of my um, MIT licensed open source stuff. So it's just as legit with that. MIT requires that you use, uh, that you credit me for code that you use. But in this case, I figure it's more important to get the rest of the world actually using this. And if they're difficult or fussy about wanting to credit me, well, go ahead and use it and don't even say anything about it. But please, start dithering to floating point. It's only about 25 bits at its loudest. And yes, it gets quieter and quieter as you go. For instance, I'll demonstrate. Uh, and granted, this is loud, but that's 20 bits of offset. But it's only attenuating so far, and every single bit of it will uh, add up, especially in floating point. In floating point, you're not losing the details. So if you've got something that's down like here, you might not hear it directly, but if you throw a compressor on after that, the compressor will be more than happy to amplify what you've done. And the, whatever little grindy bits you've put in there will end up coming out. Please dither to floating point. I know it's a big challenge to get people even to dither to things like 16-bit or 24-bit because, of, oh, you can't hear 24-bit. Please dither anyway. It's correct. But in this case, this is something that, to my knowledge, nobody does. Well, except me. I'm putting, as, as you listen to this, I have put it in all the plugins now, so please go ahead and use those. But I think it would be good if other people did this as well especially on things like I like the Max, I like Core Audio. Core Audio does a bunch of cool things, like make all these plugins um, work for Quad and 5.1 and so on, just automatically. But uh, it does have that 32-bit bus, and there's no getting around it, so this is how to fix it. I hope you enjoy trying out all my plugins in a newly revamped form. They should all sound just a little bit more effortless. When I was test listening to this stuff and applying changes with plugins and things, the impression that I immediately got was, oh, okay, that's good. That's what it was supposed to be. And of course, that's exactly the point. It is uh, audio processing done as it's supposed to be and not adding digital artifacts that you've been hearing quite plainly this entire time by demoing uh, Dither Float. I hope you like all this work that I've been doing for you. It's taken an extra week, and I've been doing a lot of compiling and stuff, but I feel that it's worth it. And anybody who thinks that this is not worth it because it's too far down and quiet and you can't possibly tell, sorry. I'm doing it anyway. Hope you like it. Thanks.